Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Maria Soreo. Today you're going to meet a local resident who helps to make our community just a little more beautiful. My brother and I, Ray, okay. we had, we, of course, we have been doing business at this location since 1988, so long time. Okay. And we have always ventured into businesses that we knew nothing about, but concept and basic of businesses are all pretty much the same. So in 88, we started the video business. In 92, we took over uh, a dyeing business, which was a dry cleaning business. So before you know it, we went into dry cleaning business. And then, and then in 92, we had a neighbor who was a contractor next door. He was moving out, so we took over that space as well. And we figured, OK, we have two retail spaces. And with the video, of course, gone some time ago, what can we do with these spaces? Because now we have two retail spaces. So okay. we kept on looking at different ideas. And we kept on coming back to flower shop. And uh, 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 what could work for, for the location and the community? And we figured there is room for, of course, a lot of great flower shops all over South Bay. Sure. But we figured we wanted to go take it a notch higher, go to a higher end, bring in different designs, clean it looks, and uh, again, take it to a higher level. Of course, West Los Angeles has more of that, and in South Bay, we felt there was not enough of it. Interesting. Definitely some, but we felt not enough. So we thought there is room for one in PV. And our timing was, could not have been any better, was right on the money. Uh, as we actually opened up our business, Terraneo's construction was coming to an end. Okay. And so we, uh, we connected with them, and it has been, of course, a great partnership for us. Timing is everything. Yes. Okay, but w what did you offer to them that made you stand out, do you think, over somebody else? Uh, basically, it, it was, the, I think it was a combination of two things. Uh, one is the connection itself. Second, at the end of the day, the connection is great, but mm -hmm. then you've got to be able to deliver what they're looking for. Exactly. They have, the, of course, their standards. And you got to meet their standards and their customer standards because we serve both. We serve Terranea itself, mm -hmm. then we serve the customers. And when I say the customers, it's also the, the guests who stay there, but also corporations. A lot of corporations who come to Terranea, they, they have different functions, different events, yep. and they have different needs. And those needs change and varies, and each one of them, their, their, their unique requests. So we got to be able to meet all of them mm -hmm. and make sure they're happy with it and be able to deliver. So once a week, he actually comes and replaces most of the house flowers, everything that you see in the living room, on the concierge desk, near the restaurants. Other than that, we probably see them once a day, if not every other day, on slow times. Yeah. And that's everything from one bouquet that we had today, which was just a birthday bouquet, to, um, well, Valentine's Day, I don't know. I think he actually was here the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> he moved in, right? <laughs> he did. He did. I think we had about 20-something, uh, you know, just roses on top of everything else that he was delivering, um, as well as weddings. Some of the weddings, uh, like this past weekend, we had two, and he was servicing one of them. So he was literally here for all of my guests and the whole entire wedding. And it was just, and he shows up every time. I think Sean also brings that local feeling to it. You're not getting 1-800-Flowers, which may seem very impersonal. We also have a few things that are named for specific arrangements that we've had guests say, oh, I loved that. And he created one that's in a fishbowl with shells, or he creates the one with the bamboo. And it kind of takes on its own personality, but he knows that that's what our guests liked as well as he knows how to deal with um, the seasons out here, the way the flowers kind of blend with what people are asking for. Um, I also feel there's still that, and it's maybe because I'm from a small town, there's a small town feel to the way he services it. Mm -hmm. He will go back to the flower mart and get a specific black rose for you. And if that's what you wanted, you know, he'll actually take care of that. The interesting thing is there's there's a whole part of the conversation with the guests that you have to have and sort of memorize, yeah. and that's what Sean can listen to exactly. So whereas other people, including myself, might interpret something the way we think it was said, um, if you say to him, okay, Sean, this is, she said she prefers pink, she said she's allergic to lilies, she doesn't like the hydrangea, but she loved that sort of green leafy thing, and he'll kind of 
okay, I hear it, I hear it, okay, I got you. And he'll start figuring something out, and sure enough, it'll show up and look pretty much exactly like that. Yeah, it's great. He really can take what you say and interpret it almost exactly to what you thought you needed. Yeah, besides his drivers who show up on time and, you know, we've gotten to know, again, as a small town business, you know, you really do get to know them and really feel like this is a friend who's not just servicing a big account or taking care of uh, business. They're actually worried if we're happy and they actually want to make sure that they do that little bit extra for us. You know, if I call Sean and say, Sean, I've got three more rose petal turn downs today. I need more flowers to go. Absolutely. What time? When do you, how fast? Okay, I'll get it there. And it shows up. So it's wonderful. I've seen some things show up that even I didn't think that's what I asked for. And I went, wow, that's gorgeous. <laughs> um, they even brought, you know, case in point, we have these vases or vases, if you will, that sit on the concierge desk and the front desk, mostly on the concierge desk. They're this gorgeous silver collection that he bought on his own and just started using. And people ask me constantly, where did those come from? Who did these flowers? These are phenomenal. I've never seen something like it. And I think in this world of like this very competitive high design, uh, flower industry nowadays mm -hmm. you know that's kind of tough to make an impact in that sense but he does he's taught me a little bit about roses that I didn't really know yeah. um, or more so of why it's important that we offer it that way mm -hmm. when we order one single rose yes it'll cost you $18 but it's a Peruvian rose and it's literally double the size of the rose you see at any other shop you're gonna go to um, it, some of the colors he's brought us I've been really amazing and like I said I mentioned the black rose he actually found us this deep 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 purple it looks so close to black and the guest was like you did it you got it Flowers are such a creative business. Yes. Where did you find people to come in and be, yes. your, be your talent? Yes. Now, excellent question. I cannot tell you how great of a question you asked because that's a challenge I think many businesses in PV will face when we're dealing with creations. Mm -hmm. Either you have restaurants you're looking for great chefs or right. you have a flower shop you're looking for great designers. Mm -hmm. So fortunately, we have been blessed that we have had great designers with us and I think we have a fantastic team in place right now and this is it has been a journey it truly has been a journey for us we have a great team together right now that no matter what comes to us what's thrown at us we have no issue of delivering flowers are very emotional yeah, absolutely uh, so it's not it's a cut and dry kind of a thing absolutely and, and you have to be able to sit down with people and really kind of lock into what they want to do now do you do that I do that. Okay. I have learned to do that. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure because that's a huge task in itself. Absolutely. And that, that's one of the things I have totally learned that you can't necessarily be imposing your views on someone else. Right. You just can't do that because mm -hmm. somebody who comes here, they pretty much have pretty good ideas of what they're looking for. Right. Unfortunately, today with the existence of uh, the internet. Right. People do search, they have pictures, they have images, they have colors, they have fabrics. So, and I ask them, I you know, bring in the materials mm -hmm. to convey that uh, 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 visual connections. Right. And I quite often say, you, you know, if you're thinking of red, let me see what red are you thinking because there's light red, there's dark red, exactly. and you know, I may be thinking of one, you may be thinking of another. So for us to be on the same page, bring as much information as possible and then connecting and then itemizing everything and then making sure that you're delivering exactly what they're looking for, that becomes a task to itself. And that's why it's really a very time consuming uh, physically and mentally. And right. a lot of people don't realize it because every piece we have to count, every piece we have to make sure it gets executed. And then the end product got to be what has been promised. Where do you get the flowers? How often do you get flowers? How does that work? Flowers, we go to the downtown flower market. Okay. Um, it works combinations. Uh, I go to the market at least once, maybe twice a week. Okay. And then we have deliveries twice a week. Wow. So combinations of going back and forth. If I'm looking for more specific things, then if I have to go multiple times, then I have to go multiple times. But if there are general stuff that we can just fax the order to one of uh, our wholesalers, then they actually, the market, how it works is, is that there are different suppliers who specialize in different things. Interesting. 
So if I'm looking for specific things, that means I have accounts with this uh, wholesaler, with that wholesaler, and so on. Hmm. And then one of the wholesalers that we have great relationship with, he knows who we deal with. So when I'm faxing an order in, he'll bring us the things that we'd normally get from him, and then he'll go around the rest of the vendors and get the rest, grab the rest of our stuff. Wow. Uh, and that's the other thing, is that you, you gotta pick who you deal with, because the products you will receive comes from a farm that they deal with. Right. So you gotta sh be sure who's the farm, and then consistency of the products. I was gonna say, you're looking for a certain quality, the yes, highest quality, so exactly. you have to make sure you can trust the people that you're working with. Absolutely. Do flowers sort of go in waves as far as popularity? I mean, I think everybody loves roses all yes. the time, but do you find that there are certain types of times of the year when people want different flowers? Pretty much consistent. The only thing I'm noticing these days, especially with brides, is that baby's breath's coming back in. Wow, interesting. And it, I never thought, you know, we'll see that, but it's interesting enough, more and more I'm having conversations to include baby's breath. So I don't know if it's a fad or if it's going to be a, a new trend. Interesting. <laughs> Remains to be seen. But tradition, I mean, it's about the same. And one of the things I always tell the guys, you, you mentioned roses. Mm -hmm. Guys, and of course, me being one of them, before, before I got in this business, I only knew roses and nothing but roses. And then when got in this business, I said, oh my gosh, there's so many other flowers. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so when guys call to order flowers and they say, can I order a dozen red roses? Now I actually have a conversation with them. Oh. I try to tell them, you know what, there are other flowers besides roses. Could we bring in other flowers? Of course, roses also to complement that and mm -hmm. make it an arrangement and not necessarily a dozen red roses or mixed roses. So to make it more interesting and bring something. And, uh, it has worked quite well, and, I, and I, of course, if they want roses, not a problem. But uh, it is one of those things that I try to educate the guys, like myself. Right. You know, we could do other things besides roses. Even more than the business, it's the relationships that you build, especially here in Rancho Palos Verdes. Absolutely. Because people will say, "Oh, I know him. Sean owns a video store," or yes. "I know Ray because they run the dry cleaners." Yes. So, no matter what business you put in. As long as, of course, it's, it's beautiful and it's done well, people remember you and then they have that level of trust, it seems like. Absolutely. You know, interesting, you hit it right on the nail again. Uh, uh, I also went in the, in the uh, real estate business. Wow. And I have been doing real estate for the past 17 years. But what was interesting was that our customers at the cleaners, I was captured I was able and am able to capture many of their real estate transactions because mm -hmm. there was a friendship mm -hmm. that w that has been made throughout the years. Going back to the Terranea, is, is that when you went in there to cultivate that relationship, they must have huge demands on you. Was that overwhelming or was it welcoming? With Terranea, we actually connected with them. And actually, that's an interesting story because I joined the chamber um, we joined the chamber in 2008, mm -hmm. and that's a, that's an interesting story by itself because I really didn't know much about the chamber. Uh, December of 2007, a gentleman walked in with a red hat, and he came in, John Heath, uh, bless him. He came in and he said, uh, you know, I think you guys should join the chamber, your new business, and I was thinking, you know, how did he find out that, you know, we're here? And, um, well, you know, how do I get rid of him now? <laughs> <laughs> You're stuck. <laughs> so I told him, uh, you know, why don't you come back next year? Interestingly enough, he came back January 2nd. I remember it vividly. He came back January 2nd, and he said, well, it's next year. And I, as a, being in the sales myself, I appreciated that so much. I said, okay, you know what? He, can, he did come back. And I said, so what do I do? He said, fill out the sign, and this is the check you pay. So it, we did it. And then uh, we, I went to some of the mixers that the chamber had. So we, we kept on connecting I see. to some of the local businesses that we were actually after. Mm -hmm. And also, an opportunity came up through one of those mixers that I met uh, director of Terranea mm -hmm. right. and, uh, uh, and the vice president. So a, a, a connection was made, and uh, it was fortunate, of course, for us 
that we stayed friends and we're still friends. And uh, uh, we, you know, we we started a venture which still continues. Their weekly arrangements uh, we replace once a week, uh, but we're, are, are we there almost every day? Very much so, because when their guests arrive and they stay and they they they're requesting for flowers, then of course it comes to us. Wow. So those are individual guests who check in. But as I said, then you also have the corporate aspect of it. Right. And the, and the business meetings, uh, those that Terania arranged themselves, and they they they, uh, uh, they facilitate the mm -hmm. entire service. Right. Then they would they would we would uh, they would connect us with the with the corporations, and then we'll find out what the needs are based on the needs. Then we'll we'll. Uh, fulfill those needs. We do business with Torrance Marriott. We do, we're the in-house floors for Green Hills Mortuary. We're with the in-house floors for the Cheesecake Factory. We're, uh, we're on the vendors list of all basically major venues from Trump National to PV Golf Club to, uh, to Portofino and Redonda Beach. So whether on the hill or off the hill, we have been able to network with many great organizations and capture business not only on the hill, but also off the hill. And that will do it for today's show. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time around the peninsula.